Hi, I'm Scott Koblish, a DC comic book artist, and this is The Void. Don't ask. In this video, I am going to teach you how to draw Harley Quinn, prankster, villain, psychiatrist. Over five episodes, we're gonna focus on the villains and heroes in the Batman pantheon, with the final episode being a fight between Batman and the Joker. I'm gonna share with you everything that I know about how to draw Harley Quinn. Let's get going. So uh, today we're gonna be doing Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn is uh, a big ball of fun. So I think that we're gonna try and have like a very energetic sort of drawing for her. So I'm gonna draw her uh, holding one of her giant mallets. I'm gonna just choose to like pull in like a lot of fun out of the character here. So I want her to be jumping and sort of like uh, hopping around. And uh, she's almost like a, a crazed Bugs Bunny, really. Uh, as far as um, DC uh, villains go, she's one of the more popular ones. Everyone really adores her, so I think uh, she's got a lot to give as far as energy and excitement. So today we are going to focus on just happiness for her. She is a psychiatrist by training. She met the Joker in uh, Arkham Asylum. Arkham Asylum is the mental institution that a lot of Batman's villains wind up in. She's got a really great set of props. So we're gonna focus on this giant mallet that sometimes she'll have. I think uh, you're gonna really enjoy working on Harley Quinn with us here. Very much like uh, Batgirl, Harley Quinn is a gymnast by training. So she's very athletic. She is um, very bouncy. She's, um, if you kind of think of her as like, a, almost like an Olympic uh, level gymnast, the great thing about Olympics is uh, just sort of watching uh, all the people, they almost defy gravity just with their motion and their movement. So we're gonna just focus on a little bit of that as well for Harley Quinn. Oftentimes these villains or the heroes, they're, they're so energetic and so the movement that they have is so extreme. It does pay to take a look at uh, what um, uh, gymnasts and uh, various uh, athletes do with their bodies. It's really fascinating to watch. I was not terribly athletic as a child, but um, you know, when you're doing uh, superhero kind of things, like uh, you really like start to focus on what the human body uh, can do. And uh, it's amazing to me uh, what some of these folks uh, are able to do with their routines and with their, their physicality. So keep that sort of thing in mind when you're drawing superhero characters. I'm also always impressed that a lot of the outfits for um, some of these uh, athletes look very much like superhero outfits. All right, we have uh, the general sort of outline of uh, the shapes and um, form here. And um, we're gonna continue with a pencil now, just a regular pencil. There are all sorts of different kinds of pencils that everybody uses. I use just a number two pencil. I'm gonna continue fleshing out her body here in this motion. She is just uh, sort of skipping, I almost, I kind of imagine, skipping her way to like uh, bashing some superhero over the head with one of her giant mallets. Her outfit is based roughly on um, roller derby kind of stuff. I thought that was a really interesting addition to her um, being able to have a little bit of personality that's separate from um, uh, just a normal kind of villain. A lot of uh, the things that we use in in comics, like uh, doing a thumbnail sketch initially, um, to sort of give ourselves some general idea of what we want to do with the character, or um, or uh, using a blue pencil. These are in service of trying to make it so that uh, we can make mistakes 
uh, that don't matter so much towards the final result. Again, I think that the most important thing that uh, if I can teach you nothing else uh, during this series uh, is just to be forgiving for yourself about um, mistakes. Everyone makes them. It's a common thing in all forms of media and um, in all forms of life. And uh, I think that uh, the sooner you learn that it's okay to make a mistake and to learn from the mistake, the better off you'll be for your entire life. Obviously, you don't want to make mistakes all day long in every single way that uh, you have to do deal with your life. But um, if you do make mistakes, I want you to be able to forgive yourself a little bit with it and uh, have fun. Well, the expression that I'm giving her here, I want to try and really build up like uh, the joy in her face. So uh, I want to try and like accentuate the, the mania and the excitement that she has um, for the things that she's doing. So so I've, I've opened up her eyes a little bit more. And I think that what I'm going to do is also open up her mouth a little wider too. Like now that I've sort of figured out the placement for it, like. Uh, I think I can make her mouth a little wider and more open and uh, a little bit more like she's yelling uh, in joy. So that's the thing. Don't be afraid to, to erase. And if uh, something doesn't look to you like it's working, then it's great to be able to adjust. So like, for instance, here, like uh, I've, I've raised up her eyebrows a bit but uh, it's coming into conflict with the hair up on the, the top there. So I think if I just adjust the hairline up here, I think that'll help to accentuate the fact that her eyes are uh, even more excitable and exciting, so. Harley Quinn is one of those examples of a character that started out in a particular way. She was initially just a henchman for the Joker. And as different writers experimented and tried to figure out what made her tick, I think she really like developed into some really interesting kind of stuff. She's, her backstory is that she was a, a psychiatrist working at uh, Arkham Asylum. And she was assigned to the Joker initially. And um, I guess she just kind of uh, becomes evil while talking to him. He kind of turns her into a bit of a villain there. And then, um, of course, the great thing about her is that she's developed beyond that, which is how all good characters do. I don't think she even needs the Joker for anything at all. Her outfit is uh, black. Uh, this side is red. She's got uh, a few different things. She's sort of in the Joker mold. She's got hearts and uh, diamonds and stars and spades all over her um, costume. And uh, it really helps out with um, the outfit. I, I think that it gives her a motif that you can kind of uh, work with. She's kind of like a playing card in that she has everything sort of divided in half so that uh, one half is red, one half is uh, black. Visually, you'll look at her and she'll have one kind of outfit. And then if you just look at the other side, she has the exact same outfit, but um, just red or black. Just like uh, the actual character, the outfit, uh, she keeps you guessing, which is great. That's a lot of fun. Her belt is kind of interesting. It's, uh, it varies from artist to artist. Right now it's kind of just a regular belt and uh, shorts. And she's got these sort of knee-high socks that, um, again, they go, they'll go like uh, in stripes or uh, patterns. So this, these three stripes would be uh, black, red, black. On the other side, it'll be red, black, red. So that's something to give some thought to.
don't be afraid to use the reference or look at uh, some drawings that other people have done of the characters. I really enjoy like uh, drawing these little hearts all over her. Uh, so if you've got a situation where uh, it's red, or sorry, black, red, black, the knee pad will be red, the little symbol on it will be black. In this case, I'm just going to put a black heart here. And uh, over here, we'll make it so that it's a uh, red diamond. And we will shade in the knee pad as uh, black. One thing that you will be faced with is trying to create some element of depth for each one of these characters. One of the little tools that I use is uh, sometimes if you've got a collar on a jacket, that you can throw that collar a little bit over their face so that it looks like um, there's a almost like a levels that you're building. So for instance, we've got the hammer back here and then we've got the level of her hair in front of that hammer, and then her neck and cheeks, and then we've got the uh, jacket in front, and then the shoulder of the jacket also cuts off a little bit of the other side of the um, collar. So it gives you some illusion of depth. Again, these are magic tricks that you're essentially building uh, so that when somebody looks at uh, this drawing, they will think immediately that there's some depth to it, almost as if they're looking at a photograph. But again, it's um, the really interesting thing about that is that uh, this is a flat surface. It's a two-dimensional surface, and you're trying to give the illusion of depth. I think that we're going to make it a red diamond and a black heart. All right, uh, we are done with the pencil and uh, part of this, and uh, we will be switching over to inking. Oftentimes I use a quill. This is a great tool. You can get a lot of uh, thick and thin lines just by varying the pressure. It's a dip pen, uh, so I dip it into an ink well and then work my magic that way, so. Her hair is a very light blonde. So in the shading, I don't really do a tremendous amount of shading for this hair. I do try and like make it so that um, it's a lot of fun and you can guess the general shape here. The great thing about uh, hair is that uh, there is no one way to do it, but uh, a lot of it's pretty, pretty fun to do. I like to throw a little bit of loose curls here and there. It sort of gives an element of um, excitability and uh, bounce to the drawing. She has signature pigtails nowadays, um, really fun. One side is uh, blue and one side is red. It's kind of a faded uh, color, as if uh, she's, uh, she's done it once and just kind of let it go a bit. I think that uh, she's just such a fun character, like um, social norms or things that she just doesn't um, really have very much time for. Although she's very knowledgeable about uh, her own behavior, uh, having been a psychiatrist at some point. She is really up there with the favorite villains at this point. I really think she's just one of the most fun Batman villains around. The nice thing about her is that um, she really is such a big ball of energy that she brightens up pretty much everyone's day.
gonna put a little bit of her collar, I'm gonna move it up a little bit so that it's over the hammer there, or mallet, and um, move it that way. And um, you'll find that I'm moving the paper around quite a bit when I'm inking. That's a product of um, just the tool that I'm using itself. Oftentimes with ink, separate from a pencil graphite, ink really needs to be pulled in these uh, tools or pushed in different ways. So you kind of have to respect that the direction that the tool wants to, to move in. Otherwise, you'll, you'll just get a lot of grief. So I, I wind up uh, pulling a lot with this particular tool. So I think the thing to remember is that uh, the drawing is paramount and you don't always have to keep it straight up. A lot of my teachers would have us draw things around your apartment or around your house. And uh, I remember one assignment that I had where I was supposed to draw just everything that was in my room. So I drew the chair and the bed and the nightstand and, uh, you know, all the different things that were in my room, but books and a chair and stuff like that. And um, I was very cranky about the assignment because I was like, well, this isn't superheroes. I don't want to just want to sit and draw superheroes all day long. But what I found uh, is that um, drawing those other things prepared me to draw things that I had not known I was going to be called upon to draw. So similar to drawing a character that I had not known how to draw before, if I've done a character that's kind of similar, like it helps me find some way into drawing that character. One of the interesting things that we have in comics is that uh, we have no sound available to us at all, but uh, a lot of these characters have really distinct voices that show up either in uh, animation or in movies. And I actually like, I, I like to kind of have their, the sounds of what they're, you know, what they sound like to be, it's, it's in my head, you know, like I, I think about what she sounds like and how excitable she is and uh, what kind of accent she's got. I'm, I won't uh, actually, uh, <laughs> I won't do any sort of New York accent for her, but um, she's got a really great uh, patois, like a really great um, way of describing things and, and uh, discussing stuff. But um, she's got a really great accent, so uh, I kind of keep that um, Mr. J kind of stuff in my head. In comics, when we're uh, drawing a scene, the great thing about uh, that sort of scene is that uh, the writer has usually something to say uh, through the character. And, um, you know, we want to try and match uh, what's happening visually. So oftentimes, like in a situation where, like, let's say Harley Quinn is sad, if I were to have her bouncing around the way that I've drawn her here, that would be a very jarring description of her mental state. Much like um, Jimmy Olsen 
in the Superman mythos. Harley Quinn comes to us from outside of the comics. She uh, initially came from uh, the animated series, I guess almost like a secondary henchman to the Joker. Kind of a fun comic relief character, and then she just took on a life of her own. Oftentimes with these characters, you find that um, the best ones really, they just pull away from whatever your initial desire for these characters to be. They almost take on a life of their own outside of um, outside of the work that you do. And then of course, different people take on the character and um, they have their own opinions about how everything should go. mallet uh, here, uh, I can sort of see when I hold it upside down that um, it's a little warped. So when I drew it, it's um, gone a little bit more this way than I think that I wanted it to. It's playful, so it's energetic. I'm not going to change too much about it, but um, one of the tools that I use sometimes when I'm drawing something to see if it's uh, even or if it's um, got a little bit of a twist to it that I wouldn't hadn't intended is to turn it upside down. Sometimes you'll see uh, something that you didn't see when you had it right side up. Other tricks are I've seen people actually take the paper and hold it up to light so that it can see through the piece of paper from the other side. And that's another trick that you can do. Um, it's almost like being your own editor at that point. At this point, I'm going to switch from this crow quill to a brush. The brush, I'm just going to be filling in some of the larger black spaces. You'll find that uh, brush and quill are very similar in thought process. You are essentially dipping the tool into a pot of ink and um, dragging the ink through off of the tool onto the page. Brushes are really fascinating. They're a lot more um, subtle and not subtle at the same time. So you can really like get a really thick line out of a brush as well as having a very thin line. Uh, let me see if I can't uh, get a very thin line out of this. Um, you can see like, um, uh, depending, the beginning line of this is uh, pretty thin. The other great thing about uh, brush is that uh, you can start out as a very thin line and get it to be a very thick line. I find that um, learning a, a brush is a really great, um, it's a really great tool in your arsenal. A lot of people I know love to work only in brush. When I first started out in comics, I, I would work only in brush, but um, pretty quickly switched over to a quill. It seemed to make a little bit more sense to me in my process. I think the, the key for you as an artist is to just find the tools and the, the uh, experience with the tools on your own. Don't be afraid to try something. Don't be afraid to abandon something. For instance, if you're not happy with um, a tool, a particular tool, then there's no need for you to torture yourself with it. Just move over to some other tool. Uh, I'm gonna switch over to a uh, technical pen now, just for some small details. And for Harley Quinn here, like we've got most of everything down. I don't think we'll need too much to add. Alright, 
there you have it. She is Harley Quinn. She's very excitable and uh, having a blast. And she is about to pound some superhero with that mallet. So what's going to happen next, now that we're done here with this aspect of the drawing, is we're going to scan this in, and I'm going to send this over to a colorist. The colorist is going to put in all of the color, really make the three dimension pop, uh, the color pop on her outfit. The reds are going to really shine against a very pale skin and in contrast to the blacks. I really enjoyed drawing with you today, and I hope that you did too. You can join us uh, for some of our next episodes on how to draw the DC multiverse. In addition, you can check out my book, How to Draw DC, for more of an in-depth process on how to draw Batman, superheroes, and supervillains. Until next time, I'm Scott Koblish, and I look forward to drawing with you again soon. I wonder if there's a, like a restroom in here I'm going to take that as a no.